Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL When things seem fishy then you probably smell The crooked referees are Roger Goodell Yo, yeah. fuck like this and I'm a who that Every day I'm living, I'm a who that Lose or winning, I'm a who that It's the sports coma, this is where we do that Where we do that, eh Where we do that, eh Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh Boogie like this and I'm a who that It's the sports coma, this is where we do that You're listening to the sports coma Right. Network. What's up, fam? Who that to the fam? Welcome to this Friday episode of the Coma. Much love to the Black and Gold family. Appreciate each and every last one of y'all for being in the live stream on this one. And like I've been saying for some time now, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, where we have intense, entertaining, educating. And enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. Much love to the fam. Appreciate each and every last one of you for dropping by for tonight's episode of the coma. We in the building. Much love to the fam. All right. So big ups to the fam, man. This one entitled uh, Mickey on Jarvis and Tyron Matthew and more. We're going to cover a few news notes and items and then kind of a bit of a late stream. We're going to pop open the phone lines and, uh, uh, let the family members chime in. I'm going to fit about maybe 10 people in. We're not going to have an extra long stream tonight. Uh, we'll fit a, a few people in and then we'll shut it down, okay? All right, so much love to the fam. Appreciate each and every last one of y'all in this thing. Uh, had the uh, had to work on, do some computer work, uh, all kind of stuff today, fam. I just be just just working my fingers off. <laughs> be doing a damn thing. Much love to the fam, man. Appreciate you there. Last one of y'all, please feel free to hit the like button. T-Rob, I see you, fam. Much love. Uh, Kai, what's up, Kai? Who that to you? Derek Turner, who that, fam? Brother John, what's up, John Thompson? Who that to you? Mr. Pop Street Thousand, who that to you? A Seminole Indian in the building. What's up, fam? He says, all I want to know is, are we getting quine back in somebody? Somebody, please, please help me, help me, please. Talk to me about this, fam. Listen, remember our relative history about quine Alexander, fam? I'm, I'm going to tell you something, uh, Seminole. I think at the end of the day, you will get quine Alexander back. Uh, he wants to come back to the black and gold as the word on the street. And of course, the Saints, uh, you know, have a timeline of what they're going to do. So they've done pretty well. They've earned that from us in terms of how they have progressed this season. I think uh, he's in the plans for the team. He's not going to be expensive. 
for what they want because you would think price is price would be an option. I don't think so. A uh, few teams, one team in particular, the Jets inquired about them and several other rumors with other teams. But I don't think it's enough to uh, push him away from us, so to speak, because his first objective, obviously, is to come back to the black and gold. But he wants to be compensated. So he made three million last year. I think the Saints could uh, up it a bit and maybe add a year on his contract because he's still very young. He's he's healthy as, as opposed to the two previous seasons. He had to work his way back to health on the second year. So I think Quan Alexander definitely deserved to come back to the team. And then, of course, the movement of the LSU Tigers, which Quan is one, will only uh, serve to uh, fortify that point that I think uh, he will indeed come back. So we'll cover the article on that, by the way. I hope that helped you out. Thank you, Seminole. Uh, Brian Pearson, who that to you? Pick it and flick it is in the building. Who that to you? It's Poppy 504. What's up, fam? Gundam. What's up, brother? Who that to you as well? Pammy Whammy. What's up, queen? Trey Joseph, what's up, brother? Trey JT, what's happening, JT? Ant Man, Neville, Brock, Trey, uh, uh, who else we got? Ramsey, I see you, Ramsey. Aloha, fam. All right, big ups to the rest of the fam, brother Eric. I see you, Josh Goat23, True Louisiana, what's happening, brother? All right, uh, who else we What's up, Josh? Josh in his bag, what's up, fam? Who that, Dana? What's up, Queen? All right, much love to all the sports coma queens, man. Y'all, you, you know we love the queens, man. Joseph, what's up, Joe? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you as well. Lori, there you go. <laughs> Lori's in the building. What's up? All right. So with the rest of the family members, we appreciate each and every last one of y'all as well. All right. Okay. Brian says, <laughs> I think I got you. Brian Brian says, uh, don't quit. You were, yeah, he said, don't quit. You were a bit with like hanging out with you and talking Saints football. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you, bro. Same here, man. I appreciate talking to the fam. WB3, what's up? WB3's in the building. WB3 like that 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 nickname for him. See, we you know prior to that, you know, he was he got upset it. Uh, oh, I ain't going to say upset it, but he kept saying, "Why y'all got all these nicknames for Pelican players?" And then on Deserve It KLJ and NAW stuff like that and WB3, I said, "You know what? We're going to give you one WB3. So much love to my dog Willie Bibbins. The Thoid is in the building. What's up, Willie? Good to see you, fam. All right, Tired Eyes is in the building. Yen Grant, what's up, Yen? Who that to you, fam? And much love to all the fam. Nola Boss, what's up, Nola Boss? Good to see you. What's up, Colorado? Who that to you, fam? Yeah, doing good. Hope you're doing well. KB, what's happening, Queen? Much love to you and all the queens, man. Uh, Lori and everybody else as well. That OG's in the building. What's up, OG? I see you, fam. Appreciate you as well. So much love to the fam. Tonight, fam, like I said, I'm going to play a few things, react to a few things. You know, the great. And we going we gonna to play something from him. To, he well, A couple of days ago, he said something. I simply didn't cover it. And I had it on my docket to cover it. I was supposed to cover it. I think what was that on the Wednesday stream? But I didn't do a Wednesday stream. I was supposed to. What was it? Thursday? I was supposed to cover one of those shows. I think it was Thursday, but, you know, I had a full show, one of those. So I decided to cover it today. So it'll be fine. Uh, also, I'm going to react off of some stuff uh, Jim Kev sent me and a couple other family members sent me. I think it was Kev. Could have been somebody else. I always get stuff sent to me about what was said by Brady Quinn of CBS Sports. Um, he looked like Clark Kent, but he he, he his, his super strength is stupidity. But, I uh, mean, anyway, Charles, what's up, fam? Dre Face, who that to you and the rest of the fam? Thank y'all, man. Press uh, Pepper Boy, what's happening, fam? Who that to you? Uh, smack on the, the like button, fam. Hit the hell out the like button as well. So we're going to play a couple of these things, man, and uh, had to do a little work uh, on, the, on the systems today and look like everything is functioning fine. Everything's flowing. There's no lagging situation. So we're going we gonna to quit while we're ahead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We ain't got, we ain't going to complain about it. All right. So much love. Mr. Fire D, who that to your fam. Appreciate y'all. Hit the like button, family, anyway. So anyway, we're going to start it off with uh, Mickey Loomis, man. We're going to get uh, Mickey in there. Here with his thoughts were on the signings of Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry and a few other things. What's up, brother Doug? Who that to your fam? All right. Give me just a second. We'll tune that up. We'll get through that. And I'll react to the CBS thing. We'll cover an article. Then I'll open up the lines and get maybe 10 family members in there. And there won't be nothing long. I'm going to have to get you in and get you out. Let the next family member kind of get up on that thing. Swag fan, who that to you, man? Tim Dunn, who that to you? Yeah, yeah, Clark Kent, bro. Bro, the dude look like uh, Clark Kent, bro, but he, he his only super strength is stupidity, man. <laughs> 
and the inability to do homework. I mean, they all do the same thing, man. It's like they get up to a point. It's like, well, and then they keep repeating the same talking point over and over again, not for fortifying it with anything that lets you know that they have one talking point. They ain't doing any real research because that demand did some research. You to realize what he's saying is stupid. I mean, I, I mean, I, I hate to put it in another way, but it is stupid. Coach Tab, who that to you, Queen? Appreciate you as well. Kelvin Washington for Phoenix, Arizona. What's up, Kel? Big ups to you, fam. All right, who else we got? Darrell, I see you, fam. Who that to you? Appreciate you as well uh, for joining us, man. Good to see all y'all in here, man. Much love. All right, so with that being said, fam, we're going to tune up the, the mighty Mickey Loomis here and hear what the old Mickey Maestro got to say about what was going on uh, with the latest stuff y'all put the uh a uh uh, uh which call it in the um uh, put a one <laughs> which call it put a one button in there fam put a one if you can hear it all right uh much love all right here we go why don't we start with jarvis um how did that come together what would you like about yeah, it? yeah look we've been talking um to him and his people for quite a while and and just wanted them to know that that um you know we thought it might be a good fit the um we had a visit, he came and visited, and, and look, I'm just really excited that it worked out. You know, both these guys, Tyron and, and uh, Jarvis, it, it's it's a little bit unique, you know, when you bring somebody back to their home uh, state and their home territory, and just the excitement that those guys had. Look, they're veteran players that have been around the league, and uh, yeah, let's get those guys back, yes, yes. Um, been really accomplished for a number of years and yet they're like kids you know when when uh, you know when you see that excitement uh, coming back home and it just meant a lot to them and and uh, just the you know just a different level of emotion than than you normally get all right let's pause it right there family welcome 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 Big ups to the fam. All right. What's up, brother? The who that to you? Brian says, uh, do, do you think Chris Olave will make the team? Absolutely. Absolutely, Brian. Chris Olave uh, will definitely make the team and he will show up and show out, man. A lot of people picking him uh, to be offensive rookie of the year early on. He's a lot of people's picks for that situation. And uh, listen, the it's crazy because if you go into the story and the actual relationship between him and and Mike, Mike been talking to that kid for a long time. He he likes him a lot. He holds him in high regard, both, and they working together right now. They're pushing each other. Chris Olave had a story. We covered it on the Sports Coma several shows back when he was talking about Mike Thomas practicing and Mike Thomas dropped the ball. Y'all remember that? And when Mike Thomas dropped the ball, he got highly upset. It, you know what I'm saying? And that's what kind of people... Kind of think Mike's kind of crows off, uh, clo uh, kind of throw it off, but I think Mike is a perfectionist. That's what I think. And most great ones have that uh, ambition, that focus to be the great. And they have a low tolerance for mistakes. So that's why uh, you would see him during his rehabilitation when he was healthy and he had these setbacks, he get extremely frustrated because he wants to play. And he wants to make, not only play, but Mike Thomas wants to make an impact when he plays. And that's the mentality of a playmaker. And that's what it takes to be great. And I think Chris Olave is picking up a lot of that from Mike, even though he's an easygoing personality. He fits well with Mike Thomas. But what Mike lacks in terms of his athletic ability, Chris Olave has. Chris Olave can make the catches. He has the speed. He's a, he can, he's a smooth route runner. He can get better. And a lot of the biggest knock on his game, according to the suppose experts the scouts are saying that he's not strong enough which he will get that here and you talking about footwork he has pretty good footwork already but mike thomas is a master of that stuff man mike thomas really mike thomas with all that all that full full blade he don't have none of that speed and so far as but he used fundamental to shake your ass out of your shoes and beat you in five yards and get to that point on the field where he makes that catch and he does it most of the time double team so, yeah, Chris Olave stay. Uh, it should uh, make the team and, and will more than likely start. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Brian. Much love. All right. So with that being said, let's keep it going, man, uh, as well. So uh, big up, Jarrell. I see you, Smallville, and the rest of the family members. Let's keep this thing going. Back to Mickey. As far as the Saints never signed LSU players, do you smirk at that a little bit? Well, we, they say we never draft them. So <laughs> this doesn't solve that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, th that they say they they say meaning you say that 
you don't draft LSU players in which the only it, you they did draft Will Clapp. You know, they did get Clapp what it was in the seventh round. So they did draft Will Clapp. He was there for several years. Uh, brother Martin, LSU Saints, and now he's with the Chargers. So a very interesting Lenny, uh, kind of interesting voyage for Will Clapp. But outside of that, the Saints really don't. They we know that we know they don't draft a lot of LSU people. They rarely sign a lot of LSU people. Quan Alexander they traded for from the Niners, but you know outside of that, the reason why it's pushed is because it's a fascinating phenomena for the Saints to be this close to a team as talented as LSU, but don't bring any of their players in. And it, you should have known something was, you know, that philosophy should have been switched a bit because the the players that are being drafted into the NFC South are LSU players. The, the Atlanta Falcons are littered with them. So are the Carolina Panthers and the, and the Tampa Bay, especially the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the team right now that's, in the AFC, that's the favorite to go back to the Super Bowl. And so far as the Cincinnati Bengals, they are they're some of their key impact players are LSU Tigers. So it's hard to uh, not see the understanding of why the family base is saying, hey, bro, why are you picking, you know, you know, going over there? Look up the role there at the players you have. So, yeah, you can sign them. But, yeah, you you didn't draft them. The last one was Will Clapp. So, I mean, whatever. We see got them today, right? <laughs> but we're, you know, so we're excited to have them. It's and I've said this before. We don't ever go into a draft intentionally not wanting to sign LSU players. Typically, we uh, want to draft in L- LSU players, but it just hasn't um, fallen our way a lot of times. If I could just ask quickly, Drew caused a little bit of a stir last night on social media. I don't know if you saw it by hinting that maybe he wants to play. The- yeah, Brian, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Chris Olave starts, bro. No doubt. Did you laugh at that and smirk and kind of take it as a joke? Or just well, I don't laugh at anything, Drew says, so uh, I didn't see that. I've had a couple people ask me about it, um, but I haven't seen it and, and, you know, I haven't talked to Drew either, so. He would be capable, you think? Oh, listen, Drew's capable of, you know, anything that he wants to do, so um, I'm going to stay away from that. <laughs> Schedule came out, thoughts on yeah. the order, the yeah. late buy. Look, I think... You know, I like it. it. It's it's we haven't had a late buy like that in at least uh, not for certainly not in recent memory. I don't know if we've ever had one this late. So that's that's different, and yet you know I can see some benefits to that. Um, you know, I think the schedule is fine. It's just it, um, you know there's some quirky things in in it, in it but there always is. You know, we we're, we're uh, two out of three on the road to begin the season. Two out of three on the road to end of the season. That's probably the only thing that I'd point to and say, I don't know if I like that, but but um, look, a lot of times, it's not so much who you play, it's when you play them. And so we'll just see how that falls. Yeah, so- All right, that's Mickey Loomis, man. And I'm gonna play a little bit more of it, fam, because uh, Mickey got a little bit more uh, spring in his step today, man. He's feeling pretty good about himself. We're gonna let him uh, run on a little bit more. Trey, Trey's asked the question, did you see that dumb Twitter say that uh, the- we're going to pay for the cap space down the line and brother Ross grilled him. Well, I mean, <clears throat> no, I didn't hear about that, but that's uh, we had to who that nation knows that if you uh, to a, to a degree, the cap situation has been mastered by Mickey Loomis and uh, Kai Harley. Uh, actually, Mickey Loomis is the uh, Bill Belichick or the Sean Payton or whatever you want to call <laughs> the Bill Walsh of the economic sec- sector. In terms of how he does these contracts, I mean, if anything could show you the Saints were over the last two years, one hundred and eighty million dollars in a in a red. And that was just the last two years. And look what the what he's done, what the team has done. I mean, you lose two of the most iconic pieces of the Saints infrastructure insofar as uh, Coach Sean Payton, who steps away. And then you lose Drew Brees, who's the first ballot Hall of Famer. So one steps, then the next one steps. And then the Saints dealing with 180 in the red plus 180 plus 180 million in the, in, in the red. And what the Saints do within the second year, the year that actually the forecasters 
include myself, say, okay, listen, the first this year and the draft, the Saints manipulate the draft, have two solid drafts to go along with the the last, uh, the previous draft, not this year's, I mean, last year's draft, the draft before that. And then that would help kind of form a foundation along with the pieces you have to kind of take them into the future. But the Saints had a formula shift this year when Dennis Allen came on. Dennis Allen came in there super aggressive and was saying, listen, we want to compete right now. This defense is a Super Bowl defense. Our offense just needs a few pieces here or there and we'll be fine. He made some movements in the staff in terms of the medical staff and his uh, and his coaching staff. And the Saints put together a form a very formidable team and the aggressiveness in this second year just was out of worldly, but 180 million fam who can do that except for the black and gold. So to a degree, Mickey has mastered the economic situation with these phantom deals and how he's able to cut up things. And a lot of people are borrowing his stratagem, but with that, um, with that kind of finagling, you will have some financial ramifications, but not some where it'll be crippling. The way they operate, they found a way around the cap. And I wouldn't be surprised. Now, listen to me on this, that if the NFL don't start changing that once the Saints start, once once the Saints win the Super Bowl and do all this, I wouldn't be surprised if the NFL came with changes to try to stop the Saints manipulation of that because they've definitely mastered it. His Mickey. Some teams lately have asked for a later buy. Were you one of them? Or? Well, the, the only thing that we asked for was we didn't want to have the buy after the uh, game in London. We wanted to... Um, you know, keep playing because we felt that was just too early. Um, I didn't expect it to be week 14. <laughs> you all have had success in London. It's going to be, I know you're playing Charlotte. It's going to be the same routine, Charlotte and straight over to London. Yes. Yeah. London Marathon adding any uh, extra headaches to logistics? Um, I'll be in shape by then, I think. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I, I, no. Well, listen, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to be outside the city itself and, and not expecting that to impact uh, impact our routine. To get to oh. avoid cold weather, but now you've got Cleveland and Philadelphia, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day. Yeah. Is that something of, of concern or something? No, I think, you know, I think one of the things we look at every year is, hey, potentially where are the cold weather games? Um, yeah, Pittsburgh, Philly, uh, Cleveland, all potential, you know, cold weather games, but we'll deal with it. It's... Listen, it's uh, it'd be the same for both teams. To get uh, two big name free agents post draft is that is that unusual or is that normally how it, I mean um, a little unique to this off season or I don't know. I'd have to go back and, and kind of you know think about that and look. I, you know, it's obviously I think I think we over the years have have uh, you know we've been active after the draft in free agency. So I don't think that from that aspect it's. Um, it's too unusual, but you know these, you know these two signings are pretty unique in the sense of, you know, guys coming home very productive, all pro type players. So you know, that's a little bit unusual, but but uh, yeah. Still. Yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. I, there is Saints have done signings after uh, the draft. They've done that before, but none of this caliber. This is totally something that has not been done before in the Sean Payton era where you had two high profile players who are pro bowlers, not just upside players with potential, but players that have reached their potential and have a level of star to their name and are mentioned amongst the best at their craft, getting two guys like that, that played together from the same university, which happens to be LSU has never been done before. That's why the who that nation is up in arms because they know what this means when you accentuate the spots because just like, okay, we're going to get another wide receiver. And Jarvis was, this was bantered about during uh, certain parts of free agency, but both those players, but when you seen the shoe fall uh, on Tyron Matthew, I knew Jarvis Landry was coming. I, I knew because if one would have went, the other one would have rec recruited the other one to come. And that's when, and then mostly and these guys are from the area and they're going to just recruit each other to come. Uh, to the Saints. So that's why uh, a lot of people are kicking the, the OBJ stuff. A lot of people say, nah, man, Q, whatever. Nah, you, you're saying that now because there is 
Uh, you, you don't see a need for him right now, but he's not healthy right now. Anyway, he won't be healthy until October, November th uh, that time. And what are you looking like then? You see what I'm saying? What are you looking like then? So, I mean, at some point, you know, you might be dealing with whatever you're dealing with. Who knows? What are you looking like in October, November around that time frame? I don't know. So it's, 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 it's easy to say no now because of what you're dealing with. But when that time elapses, what are you looking like at that interval? That's what the whole thing. They're going to recruit each other. That's why I'm really looking at guys like Williams, the running back. A lot of people are saying that because it makes sense. And the guys that they're talking about adding like Williams, the running back from LSU, Kansas City Chief running back who did a phenomenal job with them. When other running LSU running back Clyde, that was Hilaire got hurt. Uh, he came in and did his power thing, catching the ball, all that. These guys will not break the bank, neither Quan Alexander or LSU Tigers. They will not break the bank. The, and Jarvis Landry, Tyron Matthew know what they mean coming to the Saints. They know this is a championship team. These guys are guys that's playing on a very high level. They elevate the team to that level, and it instantly, in my mind, makes the Saints a Super Bowl contender, even though the rest of them are not saying it. But here go the rest of Mickey. Practices in Green Bay? Well, I think, you know, we'll sort that out. And, um, yeah, we'll sort that out, possibly. Nick, how much of an advantage do you feel like it provided for those guys coming home? Um, they mentioned it now. Obviously, the money's going to be right. But, you know, both of them specifically mentioned coming home. Yeah, I don't know if it's an advantage to them or not. I mean, that, that's that's kind of up to them. Sometimes it's more pressure, you know, when you, uh, you come home and you want to perform you know, extra well um, in front of your your um, your family, your friends. You want you know the team that you grew up with. Um, you want them to do well, so it it's probably a little ac extra pressure. But these guys are veteran players that uh, you know welcome that type of of uh, atmosphere and that type of pressure. So I don't have any concerns about it. Uh, I'm just excited for them. Excited for us. Listen, we've got two good players and. and we would have wanted them even if they were from, you know, New Jersey or some other state. So um, it's a bonus that they're coming home. Um, and I, again, I'm, I'm excited for them, excited for our fans, um, excited for our team. Mickey knows what it means, man, when you the Saints were uber aggressive, more aggressive than I've seen them in a long time and going after some of these players, man, to be honest with you. And you can't help but to look at the team overall and say to yourself, wow, uh, they're finally uh, listening to the who that nation. They finally making moves as opposed to just sitting there and waiting. A lot of these players, a lot of these players are getting older in age. Guys like uh, Demario Davis, Cam Jordan, those guys are getting up in age and you want to take advantage of their years while they're here by putting a competent offensive team with them. The most balanced team that you can afford to go along with these guys and hopefully, well, not hopefully because I don't want to use that term, but with destiny and the Saints taking this serious, which it appears that they are, that they pushed all these other teams out of the way. And remember, during the season, we can look at the Saints' domination, but a lot of times, oftentimes, we come into the games with a lackadaisical approach. It happened several days, uh, several days, several games last year, and hopefully, we can kick that out of there and more of aggression and attention to detail is what we need to be a Super Bowl team. But anyway, we got these guys on the screen, Ryan Wilson, who does a lot of mock drafts, talk about a lot of inside stuff. We got uh, B Mac, uh, former Steeler uh, corner back there. And we got Brady Quinn not hitting on nothing. I mean, uh, he uh, book took uh, whatever, whatever little stuff he did at Notre Dame and Quinn was never hitting on nothing. But anyway, uh, it's, it's all to the good. Nola Ball said the fact that the national media is trying to promote OBJ uh, to other teams means they're scared that the, the Saints will get him. Listen, let me tell you something. The Saints are a real contender. He was looking at them last year. And remember the reason why he did. I, I think he didn't step to him. Uh, the Saints because of Jameis Winston. Jameis wasn't there. And, you know, the quarterback position to him didn't look uh, peaceable. It didn't look good. So he made the correct decision for him. He went to the Rams and he won a championship. But, you know, what does it mean to help your hometown Saints win another championship? OBJ, you know, so, I mean, it's this could be special. Yes. And they're going to be up. Listen, the national media is going to be upset because the New Orleans Saints and the New Orleans Pelicans. These two, these both these teams are going to be uh, top notch teams over the next several years, especially the Pelicans. 
So the Saints are merely following, you know, their sister team into uh, this next success that that nine and eight year helped knock the Saints. The Saints didn't make the playoffs. All it did was give more focus and uh, attention to detail to understand, listen, we got to get back in there. We took it for uh, a granted. We get in there and we have these horrible playoff games. We got to step it up, attention to details. We got to hammer it through. And Dennis Allen, man, you got to give him credit for his insight because he sat there from the defensive perspective and watched what Coach Payton do offensively speaking like, oh, I don't know if I would have done that. You know, you got to be hearing that in his head because you can see him seeing what the Saints offense needing and going after it, meaning power running game, uh, adding the offensive line coach there and Doug Marone, which is an upgrade over the previous guy. And then you look at the uh, the other moves that he and Mickey Loomis are putting together where Coach Payton, Payton didn't see value in his offense to step away from it. Uh, Dennis Allen does see the value and accentuated by filling in the minuses. Now you have pluses everywhere in a loaded team that's ready to dominate in the NFL. Anyway, let's listen to uh, Brady Quinn and the rest of these guys here with their analysis on what they think about uh, what goes on with the Saints team. Y'all put one in the chat if y'all can hear it. I'm, I'll tell you what, B-Man. I'm over Tom Brady. He feels like Will Ferrell. Go ahead, Brady. Sorry. That boy said he over Tom Brady. He feels like Will Ferrell. Pause. I don't know what that means, but I I, I guess if I guess, I would say that uh, they were smoking a dope on Tom Brady. Now I guess he's a joke because <laughs> Will Ferrell is a funny ass guy. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I guess uh, that that that's a good way to start the uh, the conversation, isn't it, fam? That he over him, he feel like Will Ferrell, whatever the hell that means. Anyway, let's hear the breakdown. No, I was just gonna say he's carrying this show right now as our host, so you gotta give him a lot of credit. You know, he's 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 handled a lot of the maneuvering up, around Kendall? these uh, these divisions and some of these outlandish takes that we've had so far. So I, I go ahead, do your thing, Ron. You can have that take. I'll give it to you. Thank, thank you. See, they'd be back. I was sticking up for you, and then you turn around and dunked on me. You're Not right. going to lean on I'm Brady. Wrong. This is how You're it right. works. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's talk about the Saints. Let's talk about old Jameis Winston. Uh, I I think he's going to be uh, continue to have a really good uh, a sort of playing career in uh, New Orleans after the ACL injury last year in late October. BMAC, what are you expecting from him? He's now got Jarvis Landry. He's got Chris Olave. They drafted an offensive lineman, Trevor Penning. I think this team has a chance to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, hopefully Jameis is 100% healthy from the ACL injury. And I think if he did not sustain that injury a year ago, guys, clearly the Saints would have made the playoffs. We probably would have saw nice numbers from Jameis. And also, too, what would this offense look like without Sean Payton? You know what I mean? Sean Payton was a big, big part to what they done offensively, the foundation and the structure. But I had this team winning over eight wins. I think that is an ideal number. Vegas hit the eight win plateau. I go over, I think 10 wins will be a sufficient number. And here's why, you talked about the pieces offensively. For the very first time in a long time, we saw the Saints become aggressive via free agency. Going to get Olave in the draft, bringing in Jarvis Landry, hometown product. Also, Tyron Matthew added him to the secondary. Don't forget about Marcus May as well. They added him to the secondary. Uh, this is a team, when you look at the division, yes, they're chasing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but clearly they're above the Carolina Panthers. They're above the Atlanta Falcons. And because of all of that, I go over, I see 10 wins. I, I, look, this might be the team I miss on. I've got seven wins. And, and reason being is I think there's going to be a Sean Payton effect. His play calling, uh, absence of him being there is going to hurt them. Uh, this season's going to be a roller coaster for New Orleans. Yes, they got some talented additions between what they did in the draft, who they signed in free agency, and all that. But the reality is uh, they've got an easy opponent than a tough opponent. Starts off that way to, to start the season, and it really carries on with the exception of uh, their last few games. They've got a really laid by. Uh, not a huge fan of that. Uh, obviously, it's better than too early. Uh, but for me, it, it's seven wins, and it's not an indictment on, on Jameis Winston. I just think there's some. Uh, Clark Kent, uh, who turns in, he don't turn into Superman. He, he turned into stupid man. The, the thing is, only a person who either don't like the Saints or didn't do any research would say the Saints will be only would, would win seven games. <sighs> It's just it's just I can't believe these people are, even got jobs with networks it's supposed to be sport networks. Clearly, these people are not doing any research, man. They're not doing any research. I mean, your argument is 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 toe up from the floor up. I mean, the Saints without a quarterback when Jameis Winston went down, the team was five and two. I mean, 
You mean to tell me with the with the more improved additions? They were five and two. He was two games off of winning seven games uh, last year. He was five and two as a starting quarterback. What you talking about? What are you talking about? You know, it's the same thing with that 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 guy from uh, the other show on Fox that picked the Saints to go eight and nine. You went backwards? How? It, it didn't make any sense. Five and two with Jameis as a starting quarterback last year. How do you, they only win seven games? That, that don't make any sense. Then the the over the, just the annoying commentary that he keeps recip he keep regurgitating is the fact that he keeps saying the loss of Sean Payton. Dude, do you not understand that Sean Payton is still in the building in the personage of Pete Carmichael? His philosophy is still present. See, that's what I'm saying about about understanding and doing research before you open up your dumb ass mouth and start talking about something. See, it's just, it just shows the ignorance is just preceding them. It's not possible for the Saints to win seven games this year with a loaded ass roster unless severe injuries impact the majority of the team. The Saints last year didn't even have most of it. Didn't even the offense in several games toward the back end of the season after the injuries tore up the quarterback position. The offense didn't even help the, the Saints win contests during that period of time. It was the defense, especially in the Tampa Bay matchup, when the defense was responsible for blanking Tom Brady. I mean, it's just it's just just it's just stupefying uh the commentary on these guys. Seven wins for the Saints with Jarvis Landry, a healthy Jameis Winston, Elvin Kamara ultimately coming back. The Saints are loaded. The defense is that. Even with our defense where it was in the offense last year, they still won nine games. You're not going to go backwards for seven games. But I guarantee you to ask him who will win the NFC South, he would sit up there and tell you it's Tom Brady, even though their team is weaker than what it was last year. You see? You see? And it's not the fact that these people don't like the Saints. It's the fact that these guys don't do no research. See, that's common sense. You know, I didn't even have to get all up into my spill, my uh, get all into my uh, my, my hot-buttered rant. And, and start fussing and throwing and uh, throwing stuff at them and this words and all this kind of stuff. Didn't even have to do that because it's not even warranted because that don't even make any sense what they're saying. I mean, that makes no sense at all. Sean Payton is present in the building in the person of J.P. Carmichael. Several of the offensive staff still have identities of Sean Payton. He left the stamp there. And, in, and when P. Carmichael is a more conservative version of Sean Payton. Meaning that he knows Sean Payton's scheme. He's comfortable here because Jameis Winston operating in this third year of a black and gold quarterback. He's going to, and it's just a lot of positive things circulating around that. But see, what it really is, is not Jameis, it's not Sean Payton not being present. What it is, is, and they can't say it, but they want to say it, is Jameis Winston. I showed y'all that. I showed y'all that. It, the, the thing is, it's not about the Saints no more. It's about the quarterback. See, they don't want to tell you that. I'm telling you that's the national narrative for these guys. He didn't want to admit it, so he said the Sean Payton effect. There is no Sean Payton effect. There's no Sean Payton. Sean Payton is gone, and you can see the, the Sean Payton effect. Maybe it ain't as negative as you think because he's tired. He was tired. He was tired. And he got out of there. He left and, you know, bon voyage to you. But you got a guy there that's fresh, that's 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 younger, that wants to win, that's determined, more ambitious, that's more commonsensical. And you can see how the team going. They act, they utilizing all resources to make the team better. They're not looking at this thing saying we're going to put it all on the young wide receivers like we did last year. No, they went and got bona fide proven pro bowlers like my, Tyron Matthew. And Jarvis Landry and incorporated them into the team. And they're not even done yet. The Saints are still adding talent here. Thank you, Prime, for your super chat, fam. He says, fam, pray for my sister. Sister's loss. My niece died. Oh, my goodness. From a brain aneurysm two days ago at the age of 43. Please, please donate to her funeral fund on Facebook page. All right. I am so sorry to hear that, brother Prime. Oh, my goodness. Brain aneurysm. Wow. At the age of 43. My goodness. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Prayers to you and your family, man, as well. Uh, and brother, he says, donate to her funeral fund on the fate on the Facebook page. OK. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Prime. I'm so sorry. My condolences to you and your family, my brother. I'm sorry to hear that, man. That's in some prayers this way, family. And uh, feel free we, if, if uh, brother Prime to, to look up that Facebook page and, you know, maybe we collectively we can drop a little something on it, man. Goddamn, man. I'm sorry to hear that, man. 
But uh, blessings to you, my brother. All right, brother Judah, who that to you? T. Scott and the rest of the fam uh, and everybody else. Appreciate y'all being here uh, as well. But yes, this is uh, this is um, this is the trend most of the time that we see from some of these media types uh, that uh, Brian McFadden had a pretty, uh, pretty good breakdown. He kind of went into statistics. He walked you through the thing to get his process of mind. And Brady Quinn simply just used one excuse, which was the Sean Payton thing, not realizing that P. Carmichael is his number one acolyte, not meaning, you know, not uh, besides Drew Brees was the quarterback that you have. Who else would you have to run the same system after Sean Payton is gone except for P. Carmichael? It's commonsensical. P. Carmichael is familiar with the team. He doesn't have any much pressure on him. They gave him a, a totally talented unit. It just is ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on, fam. Let's move on to the next article we have here. And this one coming by way of Canal Street Chronicles. It says three remaining free agents that the Saints should sign. And this is a pretty good article right here, fam. Uh, that if you check it out. But this is a pretty good one. And it says rounding out the roster with familiar faces of, of the Bayou. And you can see the big fella there who peeking right there that you know who he is. So when the Saints just, and this was written by uh, Lucas Lafredo did a pretty good job on this. And with the Saints just under 10 million in cap space at the moment, he said, I decided to give some insight on a few phrases that I believe could be finishing touches on their quest for a Super Bowl run. Without further ado, here are the three players, Akeem Hicks. And I remember the Saints had Hicks here before. He was a former, what was he, a third round draft pick, I say, or something like that. I won't say the third or a second round pick for the black and gold from up out of Canada. And he was raw, but boy, but Hicks came in, man, and Hicks was a person that didn't want to leave, man. And I, and I really always said that it would be so cool to bring Hakeem Hicks back to the saints. He never, he never wanted to leave him to go to Chicago in the first place. And of course we won't be, you know, he would look really, really good next to a guy like David on Yamada and call him the Can the Canadian connection. Cause both of them came from up there, but getting a guy like Hakeem Hicks, he won't cost you a lot of money. He's familiar with the saints. I I would love this move, man. Akeem Hicks is a player that I've been itching for the Saints to sign for a while out of former Saint has been one of the most disruptive interior defensive line linemen in the league over the course of his career. Six five, three hundred and twenty four pound mauler of a man will provide the Saints with a dominating force to reckon with in both the run game and against the pass it was reported after the draft that Dennis Allen and the defensive staff were high on Georgia defensive tackle Jordan Davis and contemplating selecting him over Chris Olave. In the first round, this does not necessarily mean that they felt it was a must position to address, but clearly they felt comfortable adding that area and adding that area for fast forward to now. The defensive tackle position is, is one of only spots with a question mark outside of David on your 30 year old Hicks is not the same player he was a few years ago, but he will surely add some disruption to a loaded defensive unit. You don't need him to be the Akeem Hicks of yesteryear. You really don't. You really don't need him to be that. Uh, Akeem Hicks simply just do, just do his thing next to David on Yamada. And then the Saints have a mean, vicious group of interior guys that can rotate to keep guys like Hakeem Hicks fresh. They really do. Ta Tanu Passanio is a guy that they can throw in there who was disruptive for him. Uh, Malcolm Roach, another young guy, and they have several other guys like Elvin Huggins, who really ain't getting much uh you know, initial, uh, you know, getting much spotlight, but he's another good solid reserve lineman. And the Saints also have Contavia Street there, who uh, was known for squashing Drew Brees flat like a bug. But Akeem Hicks would be a wrong, a uh, right, uh, I said, <laughs> a wrong made right because the Saints were wrong when they got rid of Hakeem Hicks. He didn't want to go and they got rid of him. Bringing him back would almost serve to a lesser degree like they did with Malcolm Jenkins, in my opinion. They do need a more. And you got Shai Tuttle there next to David on your model right now. So Akeem Hicks would definitely step in and start and he would not cost you a lot of money. So, that, you know, that would be answered. And then you talk about Daryl Williams out of uh, LSU. Yes, exactly what everyone in New Orleans is hoping for. Keep LSU Street going, right? It would be a joyous moment for uh, Williams and his family. But my reasoning for placing him on. Uh, here, starts on the football field. Williams, a 26-year-old, formerly of the Chiefs, had his best year in 21. And in that year, he saw his, his most opportunity. The young running back carried the ball 144 times for 558 yards with six scores. He also caught the ball 47 times for 452 and two more touchdowns. The former LSU Tiger would give the Saints a versatile weapon. While Elvin Kamara serves his likely upcoming suspension this season, 
The good thing about Williams is that he only going on, he's only going in his fifth season in the league, meaning if he performed well enough as a saying, he could very well feel Mark Ingram's role as a complimentary back in the near future. And he would not cost you a lot of money either. Williams, another LSU Tiger, runs hard, catches the ball out the backfield, has experience uh, in the playoffs and playing games for you. He would be a welcome addition to the black and gold. He really would. Both these players that that's in this article are players with experience that fit obvious needs for the team. Hakeem Hicks, if they signed him tomorrow, Hicks would start next to David on Yamada. If you sign Williams tomorrow, Williams would obviously compete against Mark Ingram for that second uh, running back position. And then, of course, the last one is Quan Alexander. Now, Philip Lindsay, a lot of people were pushing Philip Lindsay. But remember, he signed with the Colts. So, but this is a better call for Williams because he's an LSU guy and now he's not going to cost you a lot of money either. And then of course, this is what everybody yelling, Quan Alexander. Good thing Quan was on the team previously or else the LSU thing would have gotten way out of hand. As far as it fits, the, the sole reason I believe the team should bring Quan back is simply because of two things, his skill set and his energy. What Quan is able to do in coverage is something, uh, is, is something that is uh, of great value in today's league, the ability to run with running backs and tight ends, stride for stride and, and close on the football field and close in on the football field and zone some of the Quine's greatest strengths. His sideline to sideline speed is something that is very noticeable on the field. If the Saints can get Quine back in a sub package a role for the third downs, especially, it could do wonders for the team. He would also provide some needed depth at the position as well. And when it comes to his energy, Quine has one of the most exciting, he's one of the most play, exciting players on the team on and off the field from his celebrations on defense to his rap songs with Chauncey Gordon Johnson and Teron Armstead. Quine brings nothing but pure contagious energy and a, com- a camaraderie, a camaraderie to his team. He's one of the biggest reasons why the Saints play in uh, style, that style on the defense and they play hard for one another and have fun doing it. So yeah, absolutely. Quine Alexander would be an absolutely Terrific fit for the Saints and really, truthfully, Quan Alexander is the linebacker, but he really is like a safety. I mean, he has safety speed, safety hidden ability of linebacker power. And that's the mix about about him. He don't get swallowed up. He knows how to move around the field. He's the perfect complement to Quan to uh, Demario Davis, who is getting a little older there. So you want these insurances. And remember, guys like Quan Alexander will not cost you a lot of money and these are all impact players so each one of the guys that's list that's mentioned on this list that this writer astutely covers are guys that if you sign them tomorrow they'll either start or try to be a starter right away and none of these guys will cost you a lot of money to bring in so the Saints do have a few bucks right there and adding these guys will definitely upgrade the team even further and Quan Alexander is definitely going to be on the move so really cool to see all of that going on fam don't you think it's pretty cool man to see that man and i think um getting quine alexander a lot of people say q what about quine is he coming is he coming absolutely quine alexander saints gonna make that happen man rest assured don't even worry about it i mean they want he they want that it's not like a i don't want you to be here and no they want to be it's all about get them together so we'll see all right, so with that being said, uh, let me keep it going here. Kenneth says Hick would be a good option just dealt with injuries. Yeah, you got so much depth there. You could pluck him in there and keep him fresh all year long with those rotations, man. He would be awesome. Uh, T. Scott says Williams still have tread on the tires, was basically a backup in KC. Yes, right. And if you go back to his film at LSU, he it was the same way. He wasn't heavily utilized that much at LSU. He got an opportunity to get in there and do his thing. But they had a lot of good running backs ahead of him at LSU. He wasn't really used a lot at LSU either. So if you get him for cheap, yes, he got a, a lot of tread on his tires. A lot of tread. All right, Ram says, uh, who that Q, uh, do we know if Williams met with the Saints yet? No, not yet. It's just the fact that this is all the family members and brilliant writing by some of these writers like the brother here on this article that are placing the two together. And sometimes that'll be masterful because that's a great call. And sometimes the Saints, they are listening to the Who That Nation a lot of times. They're listening. A lot of times uh, they be in the old regime, they'd be doing stuff to the opposite effect. You say something, they just, they'll be like, I ain't doing it because you said to do it. You know, it's kind of crazy. Smallville, thank you for your super chat. Says Big Q, think about this. Last year, wide receiver one will be this year's wide receiver four. I know, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? And our travel schedule looks a lot like Tampa's 2019 schedule in the NFL. 
is not a friend. That's all right. They never been a rent a friend and we're going to bat them down. Thank you. Smallville. Appreciate you. Gundam says big up Phil Lucas uh, crawl is a sleeper. He is. There was an article that get that was on a bleach report. That was a great article. And it talked about um, Lucas and they, they said they picked from every NFL team, the best undrafted free agent. And for the saints, it was Lucas. They gave Lucas, they brought, they talked about his connection with Ryan Pickett, who should be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers and how, and what he meant to that team. And a lot of people are not familiar with Lucas crawl, the six foot six. He's athletic. He got drafted into the MLB, but he wanted to play football. The saints, Definitely got something. He's kind of crazy too. He got like I ain't gonna say he is Jeremy Shockey, but he does have the athleticism. He does have the size, and he got a crazy mental, not crazy like mess up your team crazy, but a really energetic personality from the tight end position that we haven't seen in a while. So yeah, watch out for Lucas Crawl, man. A lot of people have him on their watch list, you know, along with Rashid Shahid and several other undrafted teams we'll talk about that down the line as we talk about as we get ready to roll into some of these otas and all this it's undrafted or diamonds in the roughs uh we, that you have to watch that you need to watch out for and you definitely got to put crawl up there you got to definitely put uh shaheed up there and uh there are quite and there are quite a few other ones that we might need to pay attention to as well a uh, coach tab is saying uh tyron mansion she says cute tyron uh mentioned he was excited to get in on the handshakes the defense has during 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 the games. Do you think the handshake coordinator is already working? Oh yeah, oh no doubt about it. The hand that old handshake coordinator never sleep. He and he, he right now at, up at eleven o'clock right now. He's standing in the mirror, say, "I got this one from Tyrone. We're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do we're gonna dap like this, do it like this, and then we're gonna do tigers, you know, like that, and then we're gonna put it down, put it back up, and then we're gonna do that." And then we're going to go and move on, you know, I don't have, I got to give it to PJ. PJ is really man. PJ is a genius with that, with them handshakes, man. And he knows everybody got their own little handshake. It's like a signature move. Everybody got their own little stuff. And you, you know, you do this, you know, you know, it's for, it's phenomenal, man. PJ need to get an award for that, man. If that, he is definitely the handshake coordinator uh, running. He'd been the last several years, Handshake coordinator PJ Williams been I, I, we have to give PJ an award handshake coordinator of the year. That's right, PJ man, keep doing it. Uh, James says uh, we need Jameis to play decent, and I think at minimum we're going to the playoffs. Ab- absolutely, James. You hear all these people? We played them before. Keep talking about Jameis. Oh, Jameis went and he got to play like a Super Bowl quarterback for the Saints to get the. To the no, he don't. No, he don't. He don't have to play like he just has to play like he played last year and you go into the Super Bowl because it's not all based on Jameis Winston. It's a team. And that's the part of it that a lot of them saying that they talk about football teams. But then when they start talking about the team on the field and they start individually pointing out players, oh, he got to step up. No, Jameis Winston simply has to do what he did last year. And your ass is going to the, to the Super Bowl. Did you hear me on that? Brother James, you're going to the Super Bowl if Jameis plays like he did last year. Bottom line, you know, so we don't have to need, we don't need Jameis Winston to be Joe Montana or Drew freaking Breeze out there. No, Jameis does what he do last year and you are going to the Super Bowl, my friend. We are going to the Super Bowl and we're going to hold up that trophy for the first time since 2009, which has been well overdue. So we go out to Arizona in the desert and get one. That's how we got to get it. But yeah, absolutely, man. No, that, that we, you know, that's what they say. That's what they say. And they're absolutely out of their minds, man. Kenny, what's up, Kenny? Say, I heard D. Anderson been showing up. Yeah, I heard that too, bro. D. Anderson, the, uh, uh, the historical black college wide receiver. His size, man, former LSU wide receiver, he transferred. Been hearing a lot of positive things about him too. That's true. Him and that uh, black, the defensive lineman, really impressed him too. So we got to watch out. There's a bunch of other people you got to watch out for. All right. All right, brother Pat Rich. <laughs> y'all cracking up. Y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Yeah, that old handshake coordinator, man. Y'all got to understand. We got to give we gotta give PJ the, the trophy on that, man. PJ. Tiger paws, you know what I'm saying? He bust that tiger like that LSU tiger. 
and just say, hey, man, yeah, yeah, Tyron, Bob, listen, Bob, I stayed up all night, bro, working on one for just for you. What you got, handshake? Man, listen, bro, we're going to do this, going to do that. Then, you know, your hand slide past mine, grab that like that and turn it. They come back. And do the tiger paws, man. Then we're going to bring it back there. Then back up here again. And then we're going to dap out and go. Oh, yeah, man. That'll work, man. That'll work. Thank you, PJ. And that's right. And the handshake coordinator, man. I'm going to have to get ask PJ to do do a handshake. What's my handshake? But yours, Q. It's going to be going to do that. Dap it up. Twist it. Turn. Swing it on the hat. Put the, put the, you know, I don't know that. You know, I don't know. PJ, he'll figure it out. <laughs> He'll figure it out, man. PJ will figure it out, brother. I'm going to let him do his thing, man. I ain't going to get in the way. All right, brother John says, Big Q will McCleskey bounce, uh, uh, Jalen McCleskey bounce back somewhere. Hated to see him leave. Remember the Saints cut him last year, bro. And like I said, with some of these guys, don't be thinking that some of these guys might not come back because they've released them before and some some have, you know, kind of trickled back. Because injuries occur, things happen, uh, guys underperform, and the next thing you know, um, you know, you see McCleskey back with the team. So I wouldn't naturally say that he'll be gone. You see what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do that. But you, we'll we'll see though, bro. Hopefully, yeah. But I think he'll be fine, man. He's a good good young wide receiver with a lot of speed, man. So it's all good. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tiger paws. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's it's got to be something with LSU. If you tie Ryan Matthew, man, you got to. It's PJ got to put something LSU in there. He throw that L up there. L. He draw that, bust that, twist it right there, run it like that, throw it back there, come back there with that, throw that L up there, hit you with that, throw them tiger paws, and then while he doing that, see. He kick his foot like Bruce Lee, like his fruit. He a troller. He a kick his foot. You know, PJ. Listen, PJ got it going on, man. With them, with them handshakes, bro. PJ is on point with them handshakes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, Tramal says, "Q, your handshake is in double, re- <laughs> double re- the, the sports coma clap. Okay, slap. I got you, bro. I got. Thank you, thank you, Molly Mall. All right, so anyway, fam, let me go ahead on, man. Much love to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all staying up late with me. 170 plus of us in the building. Please feel free to hit the like button. Hit the like button, fam. Give me a second. I'm open up the lines of communication for the family members to chime in. We'll go probably another hour or so and uh, roll on up out of this thing, man. Hold on just a second. I'm going to share the link in the, in the chat and I'm going to get you in, get you out. I'm going to try to get at least about 10 uh, family members in. Let's see if we can fit 10 people in here right quick. Uh, and then we'll be out. Okay. Give me just a second. Let me get them, get the lines all going right quick. Yeah, fam. Yeah, that, that, that y- y'all got to understand, man. PJ, PJ ain't going to play with you, fam. PJ is, is, is that old handshake coordinator. He going, he going to bring, he going to bring, he going to bring it down. He going to make sure you got it all together. That old handshake coordinator, PJ. All right, so anyway, hold on here, fam. Give me just a second here. I'm going to get it tuned up in just a second. All right. All right, hold on here. All right. All right, here it is. Let me drop that link for y'all in the chat. And then, like I said, we're going to get you guys in here and go from there. All right, let me get... Try to get as many people in here as we possibly can. So get ready for your questions and commentary and be mindful that we'll have other people behind you. So uh, as well. So I'm trying to get as many as I can and I'm going to pin it to the chat. So that is fam. That's the link uh, in the chat right there. And um, you can feel free to pounce on in and make sure you, you know, represent with your tiger paws and that we be in the building. So right there. Anyway, uh, Tramal says Kevin Wright still on the team. That's a shame. Yeah, he's still here. He's still here. Yeah, yeah. How the hell Kevin White's still on the damn team? Well, I mean, he's cheap. He's really, he's a really cheap player. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't tell him more than that. He's cheap. But I promise you one damn thing, he ain't going to be here much longer. That's for sure. The way we doing our thing. 
But anyway, much love to the fam. What's up, Linda? Who that to you, Queen? Appreciate you. All right. What's up, brother Damien? Good to see you, bro. He said, great catching a lot nowadays. Yeah, I heard you've been working, bro. He says, uh, Big Q, uh, P. Will deserves some respect on his name. I'm pretty sure he got most approved on the team. But yeah, PJ is the man, bro. I gave, you know, PJ really stepped his game up, man. And about damn time, man. PJ stepped it up, man. Played really well, man. But that position change also helped out uh, PJ Williams uh, in a major way. So yeah, you're right, Damien. Thank you, bro. Uh, Tyrone, what's up, fam? What's up, Tron? Who that to you, brother? Good to see you in the chat, man. Uh, Adam, how you doing, fam? Much love, man. He says, I, he said, think the Saints will sign Odell Beckham Jr. Could be possible, bro. Odell won't be healthy until October, November time frame. So, and like I said, anything's possible because what the Saints wide receiver room look like at that time, are we healthy enough? Or, but if Odell Beckham comes to you and, and is interested in being a New Orleans Saints, do you turn him down? You know, the only question is money, but would he stop the money from doing it? And, and it's all about this guy been all over the place, man. To come home and help the Saints win a championship, wouldn't that be the most ultimate of ultimates that he could do? Could you, could, and, and we very imaginative here in the great Saint think tank. Could y'all imagine a guy like uh, OBJ catching passes from Jameis Winston on the deep ball? Could y'all imagine that? Wouldn't that be awesome? Brother Eric says, Q, I think they forgot Kevin White's still here. No, they they know he's <laughs> he's still here. But bro, listen, I but listen, man, he on a short leash, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. With all this talent the Saints have, he's on a short leash. We'll see. We'll see because he got a new wide receiver coach there, too. Maybe Cody Burns can get the most out of get get Kevin White to step up step his game up. Hey, he worked for Coach Richard on PJ Williams. You know what I'm saying? You know, it works. So a good coach can motivate you and teach you the game a different way to get you somewhere else. So maybe that happens. We'll see. All right, fam. So we got, uh, we're going to bring in, I uh, got a few family members. We got Brother Trey. We got WB3. Brother Pat Rich, try to reconnect, bro. It's saying that you, uh, some, your device is not connected. All right. So we're going to start with Trey Joseph and bring him in the, uh, in, the, in the stream. Trey, how you doing, brother? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good, kid. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. You already know what the deal is. ESPN ain't fucking with us over here at the Sports Coma. Uh, I only got a couple of things to say. I don't know if this is a biased statement or not, but I believe we are the most complete team in football at this given moment. The only, We only have three unknowns. We don't know how long Camaro's going to be out because you know that clown Goodell is going to hit him with at least I'm, – I'm giving him six to eight games. Just because he's a repeat offender and he's embarrassed his football league twice already. The first time was the COVID one when he was cutting up during COVID. Mm -hmm. And this is the second time where he didn't stomp somebody out. So I'm, I'm believing that he's going to get six to eight weeks just because, you know, Goodell hates us or whatever. But that's cool. We'll right. take that lick. The other unknown is we don't know how James is going to look. I believe he's going to be cool. He's going to be the best he's ever looked in his NFL career because he's coming off a full season of pretty much of rest and realization and getting his mind focused on what he wants to do in his life. That um, that interview you had played was very insightful. He was like, oh, I don't think he played it, but I had seen a clip mm -hmm. of him talking about he realized that his passion in life is playing the game of football, and having that taken away from him has really opened his eyes about the opportunity he's been given at this current moment. Yep. That was a beautiful thing for him to see, for him to say, and I, I really resonated with that statement. That was beautiful. And then the third unknown for us is the linebacker core. We don't know who who's going to be playing next to Demario. Is it going to be Pete? Is it going to be Quan? Like I hope it's Quan because they just got that energy together. Him and Demario look vicious, absolutely vicious when they play together. And I love the way they fly to the ball. I don't know if Pete's ready to ready to make that transition to be a dog like that, but hopefully he can. I think I have faith in our front office that they know how to draft people. And I think that was it. Uh, the other on oh the other unknown is the rookie right tackle. I believe he's going to play the the dude we drafted with the first round pick. Yeah, Pennon. Yeah, I don't know. There, I was saw how say uh, somebody from the coach, the Saints coaching staff was like uh, w when they brought up the absence of Teron Armstead. The first name they brought up was James Hurst, and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Well, all right, if that's how y'all feel, James Hurst is not a left tackle for the entire season. But 
Uh, we're going to see how that plays out. But other than that, I believe that no NFL team as currently constructed can, can touch us if we get those four unknowns answered. That's all I have to say today, Q. I appreciate you letting me come on the show. And go, Saints, who that, you already know what the deal is. Appreciate you, uh, brother Trey. Much love to you, brother, and uh, appreciate the, the call. For sure. All right, that's brother Trey. Peace, Peace bro. That's brother Trey in the building, man. Dropping science, man. I agree, I agree brother Trey. Uh, and I, I, I kid on the show about that. If you put James Hurst as the left tackle, uh, by Jameis Winston's blind side, then you might as well order a Hurst for Jameis because that's that, that's what's going to end up happening. <laughs> you can order a Hurst for Jameis, thanks to James Hurst, because he struggles against those speedy pass rushers. He does. I mean, it's like it's like I, I kidded about him. Uh, he he like the like the old 1930 40 mobs took his feet and, and put them in cement shoes. He has a problem. He can't lift them feet fast enough to get those speedy blockers. Even though he plays well in in increment, I like him better inside than I do outside. And I think really when you talking blind side, and Dennis Allen did say that they'll make adjustments if they need to make C fifth. But really, when you got a quarterback coming off a severe injury like Jameis Winston, you don't want a rookie covering his blind side. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, I would rather have the best offensive tackle or best offensive lineman we have covering, which is Ryan Ramchick, who played left tackle. He got drafted as a left tackle out of uh, what was the University of Wisconsin. So, I mean, he could play the left tackle position just like he can play the right tackle position. You know, you're paying him a boatload of cash. You need to slide him over there to protect Jameis Winston's blind side exponentially. Move him over there expediently, you know. So anyway, we're going to bring in Brother Willie uh, next to the stream. Brother Willie, how you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. Oh, boy, damn, boy, I'm going to doze off on y'all. What's up, bro? Hey, hey Q, bro. What's up, WV3? See, you know what I understand, bro? These people out here act like the only person in the NF NFL, or uh, why well, I can say the NFL in the NFC is Tom Brady. They act like they ain't got nobody that's trying to beat his head and it punch his eyes out of his head. That's what they act like. They act like he just gonna go. They act like he just gonna go cut the knife, cut through butter through all these teams to the Super Bowl. You got Skip Bayless with his sickly looking ass talking about Tom Brady gonna beat us twice. Say man. I'm sick of the people disrespecting us, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it like it don't matter what we do. They act like Tom Brady is this, that, and other. But Q, I got a serious question for the world, uh, the sports coma family. When the Hall of Fame come up for that for, for that chunk, it's gonna bring up all that cheating he got caught doing. That's what I want to know. No. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But. They take a brother and somebody who's a bad teammate. Man ain't got no criminal charges on his record. Was I mean, man did hard than nothing. You know, he a bad teammate. Third, fourth ballot. Now let's see if they put Tom Red ass in in the first ballot because he got caught, bro. He clearly got caught. Yeah. Another thing. Another thing. I don't like Trevor Penning. Don't like him. Why? Why not? Will I watched him. I watched him in the one on ones for the senior bowl. Okay. And that dude get beat like a drum out there, bro. I, I mean, dudes pushing him 10, 10, 10 yards in the backfield and shit like that, bro. You know? I mean, I say like Shaq, his feet work is bad, bro. I mean, it's bad, bro. He got his technique bad. You know? They got to do a lot of work with that dude, bro. But on the other hand, I watched this 300 and something pound man. Do a windmill dunk, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm scared of him, bro. I'd rather for her to be over there than him. I mean, you know, and I still think we need to trade Avin Kamara. I told y'all that shit last year. That dude got to go, bro. Why, Will it? You, you, I, I don't remember you saying because, trade because, Alvin Kamara, bro. <laughs> Why? I said, yeah, I said that. I said that the last time he got into that shit, bro. What who he got into, it, man? Hold on, he got to trade that dude. I'm that dude don't want to act right, bro. 
Hold on, hold on, Willie. Hold on. I don't understand why you want to trade him. What's going on? Explain that to me. Walk me through because the process. He don't know how to act. He don't know how to act. He don't know how to act. They jumped on that man for nothing, bro. They had to beat that man like that, bro. Say, bro, you got, like, Alvin Kamara, bro, you got too many people counting on you for you to be out there in the street, excuse my language, with that nigga shit, bro. Have some class about yourself, bro. That dude need to go, bro. Uh, that dude need to go. Say, bro, that, hey, bro, he ain't getting no less than the second degree battery on that charge, bro. No less than that. And that's a felony charge. I, I think um, I, I think what's going to happen, Willie, is that they're going to end up selling with the man. I mean, what if the state picked the shit up? Man, what if the state don't want to drop the shit? That's a whole nother thing. That's what I'm saying. Alma Kamara need to grow the hell up, bro. That dude is very immature, bro. Look at that shit in the strip club, COVID nineteen, and caused all that trouble on the team. That was irresponsible. I get you. I get you right, but they're not gonna cut him because of that. What about what about what about when he came in the building? That shit he did in the building. Remember that shit there too. I remember that. That was just he something just he not did in the building and, and got <laughs> yeah. in trouble. Yeah, he he was lying. That's all that was. I mean, I called him out on that. No, he was that's what it yeah, was. he was lying. Yeah, but you, but you. I mean, how many how many examples? A bad character, I got to show you, man. That dude would need to go, bro. They got bad son of a bitch coming out of college every year, bro. Running backs are expendable, bro. That dude got to go. That dude gonna bring our team down, bro. Next year, next next all season, it's gonna be something else, bro. This too many times in a row, man. I don't care how good he is. Ain't no one man bigger than that team, bro. Bigger than that Fleur de Lee, bro. He got the eye on him gone. I, I still I hear what you're saying. Well, I I don't I don't agree about it, bro. I don't think I think you punish him, you yeah. discipline him. But hey, man, how I don't think you trade him question? because many, the yeah, guy that, hold on, Willie. The, many, the guy did the guy the guy incited it. The guy incited it. They weren't worrying about the dude. The dude incited it. And they, you know, he got on him. Now they wasn't supposed to do that, and he shouldn't have been in that environment. You're right. And we documented Elvin Kamara stuff, but a lot of this other stuff he did was really kiddie stuff. Like he was lying, talking about he was in the building. We know you wasn't in no building. The people got cameras everywhere doing C19, so we knew he was full of bunk that time. The C19 thing, you're absolutely right. You know, the truth is he should have, even though. He the NFL suspended him for that last game of the season. The Saints should have not let him play against the Bears. They should have they should have levied that down. But and then it was also they lost picks because of Elvin Kamara. Remember that too. He lost because of all right C nineteen stuff. So yeah, he had a few things, but not that's not all stuff where they're gonna say no. We tired of you. We got to get you out of here. That's not that's that's not what that is. That's just these players, young players with money are not making correct decisions, but that's not enough for them to oust him off the team, will it? That's not going to happen. Yeah, it is. It's a no. It's a no. It's been too many times. Let me ask you a question, Q. How many, how, how many, how many, how many uh, cheering you got? How many, how many cheering you got? You got about two or three cheering, huh? I got, I got uh, two children, two blood children, and several other, uh, what we call it, I call my all right, all right. children. Let me, ask you Let me ask you a question. How many times you got to talk to one of them before you put something on their ass, bro? How many times? Is you gonna keep, yeah, is you gonna keep talking to your chair, correcting them about something they doing before you take action? You gonna keep talking? Sometimes you gotta talk with it before you take action. Yeah, but you gonna you. How many times before you get mad and you know you get on their ass, bro? I mean think about it, bro. Some stuff you just you just gotta discipline them by, you know, taking some of the stuff away All from right. them and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's levels to it. Right, so when, so, so when Alvin Kamara going to learn, man? All, all the times he's been disciplined. When the hell he going to learn? I got you, huh? really. I got I what you're saying. I just don't I don't think it's enough for him to say, I'm trading you out of here. They're not going to do that, bro. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah I know. But see, after this season, I mean, man, man, look, man, they need to do something with that dude, bro. I'm telling you, Q. We, we, we could win without him, Q. I'm telling you. I'm telling you we could win without this dude, bro. This dude here. 
say, bro, either you gonna grow up and be a man, bro, or you need to go play somewhere else, man. Plain and simple. Can nobody incite me into putting their hands on putting my hands on nobody? You know, you know, you just can't go putting your hands on people because people say shit, bro. Hold on, Willie. You got to be. Hold on. Stop the presses, Willie. Stop the presses, Willie. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. All right. Stop the presses. Now you remember this was last year. I remember an incident occurred with you out there in Florida where you was on your bike and so, you was walking down the street and you had to lay hands on somebody. No, I was riding. No, I was riding. I was riding. Let's get the story together. I was riding. And the dude pushed me off my goddamn bicycle, bro. So why you now, turn that, off the cheek? That, that, no, 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 no. If that dude would have put his hands on Alba Kamara, I would have blessed him with that ass woman that he gave him. He did. He, you know? he did he put his hands on him. He came in, He was trying to I get in there. And, and I, ain't he, hear about man. I ain't hear about the man hitting no Alba Kamara, bro. No, no. Listen, I'm saying the only contact that he made to them was when he was trying to, he was insulting the guys that was with Elvin Kamara. One of the guys had a girl with him, according to the report. Yeah, he had a girl. Yeah, and yeah. he was trying to holler at the girl. Remember, all this was at 5 o'clock in the morning. Then he then he, ins, then he insulted the, the dude and told him that he was ugly. And and then tried to get in the elevator and they stopped him. They said, nah, you ain't getting here. The guy raked his hands off of him and then they then something was said and they started tussling. So I mean, that's well, that's not, right. Don't say it, but Q, but Q, if the if nigga tell me I'm ugly, nigga, you ugly too. Nigga, don't put your hands on me though. You ain't about to put your hands on me, bro. I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock your hands off of me too. But Willie, that's what's so. up. But Willie, the man didn't punch on none of them, bro. He and that dude knew what he oh, was no, doing. Hold on, Q. That's what I'm saying. Hey, Q, that's what I'm saying, Q. I'm saying if I walk up to somebody and put my hands on them without their permission, that's the salt, man. That's the trouble offense. Yeah, I know. You can't do you can't do that, bro. <laughs> you can't put your hands on people. Yeah, I hear you, bro. I hear you on that, but I I, I don't say that. I don't think that's gonna happen. Hey, with hey, I'm just keep it real with you. Oh, Q. Oh, Q. Over a female, bro. Y'all serious? Over a female, bro. Come on, man. But black men got to do better than that, bro. Over a female, bro. Some people value their women, bro. Man, man, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. Man, man, come on, bro. Not Will over no female. Willie, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I, I'm telling you that I, hey, it was bro, a I bad situation. Hey, he knew it was wrong. What you want me to do about it? They're not going to train him. I know. I know, but Q, I could see if the man would uh disrespect the female that all, you know. You know, I could see that part. But man, old words, bro. And then y'all put y'all hands on the man first and he knock your hand off of him. So y'all won't y'all won't bush the man, bro. Come on, Q. Everything about that situation is is weak, bro. He gonna pay for it. And he need to hey, G Goodell needs to suspend that bastard for the whole season. It's not gonna happen. That's what Goodell needs to do. I know it ain't gonna happen, but that's what he needs to do. Because if he if he say you got the honor and uh, respect the shield like you both boy, I suspend that boy for at least ten games, bro. Maybe more than that. That's what I'm doing. He got to learn, bro. And maybe the Saints say, okay, you gonna keep getting suspended. We got something for you. We're going to send your ass about it for maybe a second round pick or a third round pick. I'm just saying, he ain't worth it, Q. Listen, Willie. I, if he going to keep I, I think that it's not going to happen. Elvin yeah, Kamara is, a, is a part of the Saints, bro. And the, the NFL will discipline him. I think what happened is Elvin and the, and the rest of those guys are going to settle with this man. And if they pick it up, they pick it up. We'll see how it all goes. But it happened early enough on where the Saints could do something about it if they feel they needed to. But so they're anticipating you know, him to lose some time. So we'll see. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know he can set all he want, but boy, that clown, that, that clown mission, what you call it? The chump mission? Yes. The chump mission going to stock it to him? Well, 
you can't you can't well this situation i can't be mad at goodell because uh nope. that was that was in the hands of elvin and elvin got to make better decisions bro that's what it is yeah well yeah well q i appreciate you having me you know what i'm saying and you know boy i mean bro i guess dennis allen up there mickey loom was out there like 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 the dude on Alvin in the chip mode, bro. Alvin, you know, man, you always doing something, bro. God, man, man, Dave, them niggas from Africa do not Dave, know how to act. Dave, oh, Dave, is, the, Dave is his name. Dave, uh, Elvin Chipmunk's father's name, the human is Dave. Oh, that was the name. That's his name, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro, I'm glad I caught you, though, bro. It be hard to catch a map. Be work. Man, Q, I went there yesterday to try to get me another job. You know, for, uh, cause I'd be, I be having too much downtime during the daytime. Dude tried to give me $16 an hour. I told him, man, you can go you can go kick rocks with that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, bro, yeah. It's, so, it, it, it's so ridiculous out here, Q, that... That people, these people don't want to work you, and you could go to a job and dictate how much you make. I'm telling you, I know it's, the working situation is crazy right now, man. Take advantage of it, bro. Hey, I love it, Q. Hey, Q, I love it, boy. You know how long I struggled with a job <laughs> before. <COVID. laughs> boy, I love it, boy. Job, boy, I'm doing so good, Q. I bought me another e bike. <laughs> boy, Q, I'm doing good, bro. Good, but, you know, bro. I got another little plug that I'm about to go. About, you know, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to maximize my skill and you know, elevate myself. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all dealing with me and let me come over there and clown because sometimes I need this shit. You know, the, the event and you know to have some fun and you know and uh, you know relax from a hard day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you, Willie, man. You know, we all love you in the great same thing tank, my brother, and uh, we we like having you on the stream. Bro. Yeah. Guess what's up there? What's that? Your birthday? Yep, the greatest day in the world, May twenty second, baby. Yeah, it's crazy, man. May, May, May is a is a is a, a a wild month. I mean, it's my girl birthday today. My son, my youngest son's birthday tomorrow. My mother's birthday on the thirtieth. You know, so yes, Damn, yeah, bro. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a loaded month for me, bro. It's a loaded month. Loaded month. Hey, hey your lady got you twice. Hey, your mama twice. Mother's Day, they got you. Yeah. Everybody hit you again. <laughs> That's all right. Father's Day rolling around soon. I'll be looking out. Okay. I understand that. We don't get shit on Father's Day, boy. You know, we don't get shit like they get. You already know this shit, but we might get more ugly ass sweater or some more. Uh, no, some no. More they, nah, bro. Yeah. Nah, they be representing, bro. They be representing. <laughs> Well, 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 I, well, my baby mama treats me like shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean. One time, I bought one of them for Valentine's Day with some roses and the rose uh, with balloons and shit. And the woman gonna tell me why you bought me roses? They gonna lie. I stopped buying Valentine's Day gifts. I still ain't bought none yet. That been over. Oh, that been over like two years, bro. Oh, uh, that that's rough, Willie. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I really, I was real upset, bro. When she told me that shit, I was spending my hard earned money on these goddamn roses, and you gonna tell me they gonna die? And then it's just the thought that kind of little mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, boy? I'm just saying, man, it's, it's hard out here on the black man, bro. You know what I'm saying, boy? You know, but I'm trying. I ain't no quitter. That, that's all you can do, my brother. Just keep your head up, man. Keep on doing your thing, bro. You say you're doing good, bro. Just keep doing good, bro. Don't let like worry about it. But damn good, boy. I'm telling you, the, great, the greatest move I made when I came to Tampa, Florida, I swear. That was the greatest move I made, boy. Them people in Louisiana bullshitting with their money, so. <laughs> Every time I look on TV, my state is the worst state in America. Man, I'm tired of seeing that shit. Well, bro, I mean, they got a lot of people doing good down here, too, Willie. Man, you crazy, man. Fuck. If I can't, if I, hey, bro, I, I was making it, but I, hey, look, I know Q, but I was making it, but I was making it like I wanted to make it. And I had to get the hell of them on that, bro. Shit is too slow, bro. Yeah, well, uh, hey, man, uh, it, things change. Well, you just got to hang in there, man. You just got to know where to look, you know? You just got to know where to look. Okay, I, yeah, I know. And boy, I made, that, I made that decision and prayed on that shit, bro. Hey. 
Oh, I'm telling you, man. Boy, it's lovely. But man, them people gave me, hold on, Q, a 15% raise. <laughs> what the hell? Man, I'm used to getting, like, a hospital I work in. Them bads are talking about 2%. And uh, shit like that. They no valued you, told bro. Me, oh, they valued you. There you go. I guess. And hey, look, Q, I was going to be the, the K on with the white lady because I was pissed off about some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the little white girl, she's younger than me, you know what I'm saying? And uh, she said, you know, you know we get you a 50% red. So cute boy they had that cloud over my head, and you can see the screw turning in that boy all computing. I said, God damn, I said, that's about $2 a month. She said, yeah, about uh, two, $2.25, I think. I said, God damn. <laughs> I told her, thank you. And I changed my mind about the whole, uh, uh, you know, Everything changed. All my all my feelings and everything changed when that woman told me about that two dollar raise, bro. Man, that's yeah. good. That's good though, Willie. Man, that's positive. Man, keep doing great things out there, bro. That's right, bro. And, and you too, bro. You too, bro. And uh, you need to make some more of them commercials about them uh them old nuts and all that shit, bro. I like that. I like that shit. I got. I got that. That's that. That's uh. I got more affiliate stuff I got to do. I got a bunch of work to do, bro. So, I mean, it's it's all coming, bro. Everything yeah. growing, so. Are you balling out of control? Boy, when I see QQ say old nuts. <laughs> I should say pause after that shit. That's what I'm supposed to say. All right, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, but Willie, appreciate you chiming in, bro. Uh, glad to hear from you, my brother. Yeah. Be safe out there, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Q, for talking to me, bro. No I love problem. you, bro. Same to you, my brother. You be safe out there, bro. All right. Peace. All right. That's my dog Willie, man. Appreciate brother Willie chiming in, fam. I know uh, Willie's a great dude, man. You know. Uh, thank you, brother Dre. <laughs> Dre, Dre, Dre face. This is next caller, please. All right, all right. Well, we appreciate brother Willie for chiming in, man. And uh, Willie is uh, he a black and gold man? But this is the great Saint Thank Tank, fam. So, um, you know, people do speak they. Uh, mine on stuff like that and it was <laughs> it was good Willie's always he come man Willie got a big heart man he really do man he a, he a good dude man but Willie is gonna he, he gonna he gonna tell it like it is in 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 in, in his mind he gonna speak his, his perspective so I appreciate the brother alright so big ups to the rest of the fam man we're gonna keep on going I said we're gonna go probably another uh maybe about uh 25 minutes and we're going to move on to the next thing, man. So, uh, listen, I appreciate all y'all guys for uh, being there. Dre Face, thank you for your super chat, my friend. Uh, appreciate the family members for staying up with me tonight. Uh, 160 plus of us. Please hit the like button, family. Please hit the like button. All right. Hadiz Nuts, say what you... <laughs> it was an old... Um, it's Y'all remember the commercials we did, man. We had uh, several affiliates that we were... that. We can't that uh, came around around the same time. There was a supplement company. Uh, there was a uh, it was a sir. Y'all remember the old commercials, man? This was what a year or so ago. Uh, we got some more people that'll be coming around uh, in, as well as like supporters of the stream and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, and and old nuts was a um a company that they an online company that ran by a Jewish family. And the Jewish family been in uh, the business for a long time, and their company was called Old Nuts, and they have uh, all type of almonds, and it's a it's a website you go there, it's candies and all kind of stuff there, man. And it was it was pretty cool, man. It was they had a lot of good products there, man, and there was other stuff going on too. I can't remember all of them, man, you know, but yeah, it was pretty cool, man. It was uh, yeah, they they kept me about <laughs> gotta go. Listen to the old shows to hear the old commercials. Y'all remember that? There you go, Trey said. There you go, Trey. Trey, that was the coffee company. That was actually pretty good, man. To the coffee company, uh, from crop to cup, it's like that's uh, brother Freddie always kind of throw that one at me. That yeah, but it was some affiliates, man, that we done business with. Uh, I think it was last year, family. Y'all remind me. I, I want to say this. Y'all been with me for a while now, so I, I get lost in so many shows. So. Anyway, uh, Mr. Pop Street Thousand says, "Q, you should invite." Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, y'all, y'all are mind readers, man. I've been, uh, I talk, I'll, I'll uh, DM, DM him here and there, you know, and stuff like that, just to check on him, see how he's doing. But you know, me and uh, me and me and TJ from the same neighborhood, man. Didn't even realize it. 
And I don't know if y'all realize it or not. Some of the family members probably don't realize it not because I don't have a special. Maybe I get somebody to put that up on there on a platform where they have all of the uh, cameos that we do. But I mean, it's how many times TJ been on the sports coma? I don't, I don't know. He's been on here a bunch of times. I mean, but yeah, it's by, but I, I, I message him now. What was it? I don't know. Last week sometime. I say, bro, it's time to get together again, bro. You know, it's been a while, man. So, you know, we're going to, it's going to, it's coming. It's on the works fam. So just, just be patient. It's going to be all right. But yeah, be, I don't know how many times he's been on there. He's been on here a bunch of times, man. You know, I try to pop up on his program and he tries to pop, pop him on. We, we try to stay in, in, uh, try to stay, uh, in touch, you know, uh, you know, I got love for that brother. Anola says, yeah, big Q, no more barbershop quartet. <laughs> nah, that's over with the barbershop quartets. The, the, that is done. That is, isn't that awesome? That was, well, you know, that's gone now. So, you know, there you go. So there you, there you go. All right. All right. Okay. West bank in the building. All right. Mr. Fire D much love fam. Appreciate you all uh, in the West bank in the building. All right, fam. All right, Sean say he's from the West Bank too. DC from the West Bank. A lot of people from the West Bank, man. All right, so anyway, we're going to bring in Brother Free Game is next, man. Much love to the fan. Appreciate y'all being here. Free Game, what's happening, brother? How you doing today? What it do, man? How you doing? Doing good, bro. Welcome to the stream. Man, I got some bad news for you, man. Let's hear what you got there, Free Game. What's Michael happening? Michael Thomas looking slow as molasses. <laughs> he's not getting no separation, man. All right, okay, break it down, Man, free I, game. We, we, we see the this routes. Stuff. I've seen the routes. He's not looking good at all. And he's seen the route. Who is he running up? What? What? Who, who is he? Is is it by himself running? Is you watching? Or what was going? Break it down. It, it was one little thing he had on Instagram running by himself, and man, he was slow as hell. And then he had went up against Lattimore, and uh. Shit, you know, they kind of got tangled up on the play because Michael Thomas couldn't get no damn separation. And then I seen another one, him at the goal line, and he still couldn't get separation. Uh, well, I mean, free game. Let me let me throw this at you, and you tell me, man. Um, what Michael Thomas is working his way back from injury. So I mean, he have to kind of get the got to get his moves together again, and I'm pretty sure he eventually will get back to that prime form. But I don't expect him to be prime Michael Thomas right out the gate right now. I think a lot of that has to come during practice and then game time. What you think? I don't know, man. I, Michael Thomas couldn't lose ever lose no speed now. I mean, but he wasn't. That was never part of his game, though. Free game. Michael well, Thomas yeah, was never he, a fast yeah, he receiver. Looked, he he would technically beat you. That's what that and, and he would and they had got he was double teamed and still and that was the thing I was trying to get people to understand about Mike Thomas when they try to put him they would throw uh, DeAndre Hopkins who 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 got caught up in uh, the steroids uh, Julio Jones who can't stay healthy or uh, any of these other fanciful wide receivers who were good at what they did and I'm not trying to disparage him but what I'm saying is. Mike Thomas didn't have the speed that some of those other guys had, but yet he was still able to get the numbers that though better numbers than some of those guys had not to, you know, without the speed, he would technically beat you. So speed was never a part of the equation with Michael Thomas. Yeah. But uh, what I did see positive is you can't jam the guy. You just right. can't jam it, it, Off the line, man, man, I haven't seen nobody off the line better than him since like Anquan Bolden you know it was hard to jam him because he was so strong and uh, Michael Thomas the same way but um, how's James coming through with the injury man uh, from what we're saying James is, uh, is 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 doing pretty good the last report we did yesterday was showing that uh -huh. James is uh, planting in that thing on those play action passes and throwing so yeah he's way he's a, he's ahead of schedule and will be ready for training camp and that's what Jameis said he said that several times that he's ahead of schedule Dennis Allen confirmed it say he's looking really good he's 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 on point you got Jameis said in numerous interviews he's released all kind of different footage about that as well so I mean it, it is what it is okay did you see the guy that we signed signed from Syracuse 
the guy from Syria. Oh, you talking about Black, the defensive lineman? Yeah. Yeah, I watched some footage on him. He he's intriguing, man. Man, you see, you, man, you see how big this dude is, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, this dude's this dude disruptive too. Muscle. Yeah, he impressed the Saints. The Saints signed that dude. He impressed him. But yeah, he he's disruptive too. I'm talking about solid muscle. He don't have. Dude look like almost. He look like uh, almost Aaron Donald look like. He he a little bit bigger, but man, he's big, man. And uh, the the, the uh, linebacker we signed from the Eagles. We we signed the linebacker from the Eagles, and he looked pretty good too. Yeah, you're talking about um, Wilson, uh, Eric Wilson. I think his yeah, name is yeah. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I just think we going to be uh, how the uh, Panthers was like five, six years ago when they had Luke Keekley, Thomas. You really couldn't, couldn't, you really couldn't throw the, and Shaq, uh, Shaq Thompson, you really couldn't throw the ball over the middle. You know what I mean? Because the pass coverage are so tight over the middle, that you are forced to throw it over the top or either either to the outside. You can't really do that on us no more. Now nah, the Saint uh, that that's the difficulty about the black and gold man with the with this the Saints defense was difficult last year, uh, and how. But I mean, we struggled against the mobile quarterbacks. We had when those mobile quarterbacks got to scrambling on the Saints, we had difficulty shutting that off. But, yeah, but I I think that uh, that's the main question I haven't turned. Not too many questions I got for the Saints defense, except for uh, how do they look defending these mobile quarterbacks? Because you have a lot of them. You're gonna play some of the better ones. You're gonna play them this year. The the Kyler Murray's, the Lamar Jacksons, guys like that. Jalen Hurt. You're gonna play those guys, and depending on how you deal with the mobile quarterback threat, will say a lot, man. Because uh, we'll see. But that's the biggest question. That I have is how do the Saints defense defend against the mobile quarterback? That's the question. Well, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, with the Ravens, uh, we already know they're gonna be one dimensional. So, uh, n- uh, I don't see them passing a the ball against us at all. So we can add another safety on the field, of course, because they can't pass the ball. Um, now the what game is going to be interesting. It's the Cowboys, and I'm not saying interesting for the Cowboys. I don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to beat us. You know. Well, I'm and with you re- on that. The reason why I say that is who they going to throw the ball to. Well, C.D. Lamb is a guy that with the Cowboys, I mean, isn't he, isn't he healthy? How C.D. Lamb going to get the ball? <laughs> Who Dak Prescott? Right? Is he? He's still. Is he banged up? I ain't, I didn't know he was banged up. Okay, so what I'm saying is, if Julio got uh, prime Julio had uh, and Mike Mike Evans have problems getting the ball on Lattimore, how how C D Lamb gonna get the ball? I mean, the Saints. I get what you're saying. Uh, free game. I I think a lot of uh with the black and gold gonna do, man. Defensively speaking, uh. We're gonna pressure a lot of these quarterbacks, and uh, and the guys that can't move in there, they're gonna have a lot of problems, like Tom Brady. The guys, the statues in there, you gonna they gonna have problems. But the mobile guys, like I said, they create, they able to, you know, create outside the pocket and have wide receivers give them a little bit extra room to kind of get open. Those are the things that we had, we struggled a little bit with last year. I don't, uh-uh. I don't see Dak Prescott that much. I mean, he's known to scramble, but I think the Saints can wrangle him. But uh, I'm not, I'm not really. I'm thinking the Cowboys, I'm not disrespecting the Cowboys. I just don't think there'll be an issue for the Saints yeah. to take care of. Yeah, with me playing against Dak, I played against Dak about five times in high school. Me and Dak was actually raised together. Uh, okay. And out there, my uncle lived in Halton, Louisiana. He went to um, Halton High School. And we used to, you know, we played together as kids. He played with my cousin. And, um, we played each other to go to the championship, and then we'll lose to Jarvis Landry and them, Lutcher, every time, you know. So J- Jarvis Landry and them will put us out, and then you know, one time we played Odell Beckham too. But uh, uh, Newman, yeah, 
Jarvis Landry always put us out to get to the championship. But uh, uh, Dak can't make tight window throws. Never could. Never, never could. And when you when you sack Dak, his 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 game always it it, it throws him off. It it really do. It throws him off. Uh, he never could make tight tight window throws. And with the Saints now, you're gonna have to make tight window throws. Yeah, I mean, I mean this. Yeah, the pressure from the Saints is gonna get to you, and the fact that that intelligent secondary. Um, Marcus May, and it would be fun seeing them all on the same page. And listen, Coach Richard, man, going to have those guys ready to play, man. The Saints defense, and especially on the back end, the secondary will be for, so versatile with, with yeah. those guys, man. You can be able to disguise, disguise those safeties, man. You don't know which one of them what they're doing, <laughs> which one of them what they're going to be doing. So, I mean, it's going to be fun watching Dennis Allen and and and, and Ryan Nielsen and Coach uh, uh, Richard come together with game plans defensively to dumbfound our opponent. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to this. The Saints pass rush, they, they in, in fortified the interior, the deepest position probably on the team is the defensive line. Yeah. It's all about a secondary. So, I mean, the Saints are, are fortified defensively and, and, and looking to run the ball this year and operate that play action, man. So, it's going to be it's going to be excellent. Now, last thing, you. Last year, we was right top 10 defense. Mm-hmm. Where do you think we rank this year? No doubt, top five. Saints going in the top five. Top five, no doubt about it. Got you. Top five. All right. All right, man. Have a good one, man. Nice talking to you. Thank you, free game, bro. Appreciate you. Who that to you, brother? Who that? All right, that's free game right there, chiming in, man. Appreciate that, brother, for stopping by as well. And we got much love, y'all. <laughs> y'all, something else. All right, but yeah, this is cool, man. I mean, the Saints defense, that's definitely top five, fam. I would say you, great Saint Think Tank. What y'all think about that? Saints defense, bona fide top five, man. I mean, I've seen an article where they were um, uh, doing the same thing, asking top 10 defenses, which defenses in the NFL are going to be top 10 defenses. They had the Saints, the Rams, and I think another team uh, in there, or, uh, two other teams in there. They say bona fide top 10 defenses. I would say Saints top five defense, man. All pieces, parts played, healthy. With in Brian Nielsen aggressiveness, his fundamental, fundamental, uh, fundamentalist mindset on the defensive line. Coach Richard and his intensity, passion, in the secondary. Dennis Allen uh, operating well with that coach staff. Defense is top five in my opinion. They have the personnel to pull it off and the depth to to absorb uh, whatever injuries to that occur. So the Saints are are, are in a good position. All right, let's take one more call, fam, and that's uh, uh, actually we're gonna take two more calls. We're gonna take two more calls, and that'll be it. Terrio, welcome to the stream. How you doing, fam? Can you hear me, Terrio? Hello, Terrio. Oh yeah, what's going on? What's going on, Big Q? How you doing, my brother? How you feeling today? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. All right, welcome to the stream. First and foremost, my friend, uh, what's on your mind tonight, bro? Oh, uh, you know, um, well, I just want to touch on a few things. Okay. Um, with uh, Michael Thomas, you know, he suffered that little setback, and he's been out for two years. I ain't, I ain't gonna say I ain't worried about it. I feel like he gonna, he gonna bounce back. He gonna, it might take him a little time, mm-hmm. but you know, he, I feel like he gonna bounce back. I feel like he just been laying back, got a pen in his pad, making the checklist. Everybody done said this. Everybody done said that. Michael. I feel like Michael Thomas got that dog in him, and he he just ain't gonna lay down and you know and go away. Right. I mean, we talking about the the 2019 Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, you can't. I mean, he had a historic year that year. Yep. And um, the defense. Um, I feel like the defense bona fide. Top I mean, five, top five, brother Terry. What you think? Top man, high in the top. That top five is just. I feel like they they might be one and two between right. two between another team, but I feel like the the Saints got the personnel to go toe to toe with any offense. I mean, I'm I probably might be being too high on them because you know I'm a Saints fan, but that that secondary with Tyron and 
Marcus May, and uh, we already know we got uh, uh, Marshawn. Adebo. Adebo. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Chauncey, bro. That defense is bona fide. Them linebackers, like, I, I like Quan, but I feel like we'll be all right if we don't get Quan. Yeah, yeah, Shoot. yeah. Pete, a lot of people, Pete Werner made a, a believer a lot of people how he played. He just got to, you know, he had some injuries last year, and I think uh, a lot of family members like uh, Quine because of uh, he's a mirror image almost of Demario Davis, provides insurance if something were to happen, and plus his he knows the system like the back of his hand, so it, it won't cost you a lot of money to bring him in here. So I, I, that's why oh, a lot of people on the Quine, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and um, you know, James Winston. I feel like he was having, he was coming on strong, man. And uh, the injury, he, he had a setback and he got bounced back, man. I feel like, I feel like he wanted, the team wanted, and we just gonna prove the haters wrong, bro. You just, we just keep flying on the radar. You keep saying what you want to say, but when we bounce up there, that's all it is. Damon what's already said, the talking is done, not just action. Right. That's it. So. I, that's how I feel. I feel like, man, the Saints second to none. I mean, that might just be the homie in me, <laughs> but I'm riding with them. I won't smoke behind them, boys. No, nah, I agree, bro. I think uh, you're absolutely on point there, Brother Terry. I think uh, at the end of the day, people recognize when the Saints brought Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry into the building, they knew what time it was. Because you're not going to bring yeah. those high caliber players in here. Uh, just to fall down and uh, nah, they, they swing it for the fences, which means they're trying to get that chip first time since 09. So I oh, mean, yeah. they're going to continue to do it, bro. And as the Saints move further in the season, the steam going to pick up about them. It, it's, they don't see it now because, like you said, we're flying underneath the red. Oh, they pay, they're paying attention to Tom Brady and other squads, but the Saints going to make believers out of them like we always do. But we don't really yeah. need them to believe. We know what time it is anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I already know what time it is. Just you know, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to lay it back. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to talk, man. I'm going to watch it. But better believe I'm going to talk my shit. When it's all said and done, I'm going to get on there. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. We, that's what we do, man. It's like I told y'all. Y'all wouldn't listen. Y'all had cotton stuck in your ears. Now you're understanding that the, the, the who that nation is for real. They see all the moves yeah. we making, man. This year already knew, but some of them so hard headed and ridiculous, you can't tell them nothing. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, with Jarvis Landry, the addition of him, they already saying he kind of like a Michael Thomas. I mean, we already know he got them sure hands. And, yep. and then if Michael Thomas ain't able to go 100% at week one, you got Jarvis, you got you got uh, Olave, you mm -hmm. got Callaway, yep. you got Deontay Hart. You got weapons to, to, do what, to do what you need to do until Michael Thomas, you know, get back to his elite form. So I, I ain't worrying about that. We, Jamison already showed he can take care of the ball. They running with this 30 interception, bro. That, that's really be pissing me off. But I ain't going to say nothing. I mean, he already showed growth in the system. Yeah, so, I mean, third year in, bro. Jamison, third year in the system. Uh, he's the bona fide starter, the money say so. Uh, the Saints gave him weapons. And at the end of the day, man, he just had to do what he did last year to get him in the playoffs and into a deep playoff run. Saint, the Saints are just not dependent on the offense alone, defense. We'll bring and give him plenty of opportunities too. The Saints, you know, we talk about a lot of that, but a lot of what the Saints have, this this defense will create a lot of turnovers this year. I mean, oh, you got yeah. a super intelligent defense that, like, a Tyron Matthew out there looking, knocking uh, uh, footballs away and making interception plays, and the way they'll be playing, and it's just it's another level. So the Saints defense will create a lot of sharp fields and turnovers. Uh, you know, to help out the offense. So, yes, indeed. Do not to mention your special teams is back on point. With Will Lutz there. They got they going to get help in the kick return game as well. So, overall, you look at some of these other depth signings, help the Saints in the kick return game. Not only coverage unit, but they have some guys on there that can help you have block and open up holes and lanes for guys like Deontay Harris Hardy to run or Rashid Shahid or whoever they're going to have at the kick returner outside of Deontay. These guys can be able to open up holes for these guys for for short fields. So the special teams, man, I'm looking forward to the Saints as a complete unit, man. So I mean, oh, yes, sir. it's it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be there. And, you know, uh, that's all I wanted, man. Y'all, y'all have a good day. You uh, know, who that?
Thank you, Brother Terrio. Who that to you, man? And uh, uh, just chime in more, my brother. Peace. All right. All right. That's Brother uh, Terrio chiming in. Much love to him. Appreciate him chiming in, uh, giving it. Saying another excited who that. Uh, really excited about the season, family. Yeah, we talk about the offense, but we know the offense is going to be fine. We know the defense is going to be top notch, and the special teams is there as well. You are a complete team, and that's why a lot of these people are not paying attention to the Saints. They're not looking at it at that, you know, knowing that this, what the Saints had last year, and they just accentuated it. A few pieces here on offense, you accentuate it. You filled in the holes. Now you can compete. You just got to keep your quarterback upright and bring him a running game, which the Saints. Uh, we talk, we're talking about Kamara might be spending some time away. We got time to make a move on that. Abram Smith is here, power rushing attack. They're talking about Williams, even though nothing's really uh, concrete happened between the Saints and Williams. It's simply uh, uh, the the imagination of the Who That Nation, the family members and the writers that's trying to put those two together. But they seem to be listening to the Who That Nation now. A lot of the moves and things that they're doing seems like you're running the team. You know, as opposed to saying, no, we're going to have this stubborn way of doing it, which the last stubborn way didn't get us as championships since 09. We appreciate all the winning, but if it's about championships, we only have one, and it's been over a decade since the Saints hold, held up that Lombard. That's when Drew Brees had hair and his children was little, little boys. So, I mean, it's been a while. It's been a long time since the Who That Nation seen that, that chip. And I think the Saints saying, it's time to fix that, man. And when you done made a lot of money, it's time to turn this team into a, a championship team again and, and and go at it like that. And that's what you see on the field today. They are doing a terrific job. All right, we're going to bring in Brother Freddie. Uh, Uncle Freddie is the last one. Uncle Freddie, welcome to the stream. How you doing, brother? Good. I ain't heard from you in a while, Freddie. Man, I'm a cowboy killer, but you already knew that. I'm a Saints fan. That's why I holler who that. <laughs> I'll say that too loud, man. You know Tasha. She might be in the chat there, Uncle Fred. <laughs> Man, T Tasha need to get on with that foolishness and 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 come on, come on over. Quit quit faking it to make it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Uncle Freddie. Man, how you been, bro? Oh man, I'm chilling, man. I can't call it. I might spoil it. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, what you think about some of the moves, Uncle Freddie? What's on your mind, bro? Oh, Q, yeah, man. I've I been, man. I've been, I've been missing you i've been missing your life bro i ain't gonna lie when peyton when peyton retired i was kind of hurt i was i felt betrayed i was literally sad and then i was looking at what dennis allen did it and for the raiders and i'm like this ain't gonna work this dude the defensive mind he don't he don't really understand and and whatnot but man, this off season has been excellent. This draft made me smile because we went after what we needed and got exactly what we needed. So all of a sudden, I had a three sixty. I'm like, damn, we we ain't re we ain't rebuilding. We ain't finna let Peyton stop by momentum. We f we finna build off of what we had already and do it bigger. Mm -hmm. It's time to bury the Drew Brees Peyton era. That era was gone. It, it was exciting. Yes, it it yes it brought the Saints back to life after decades of 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 despair and heartbreak and and bags and. Uh oh, you still have uh, uh, brother Freddie? There you go. You kind of went out on me. Oh, okay. There you go. We man, we we had been on a little drought, and uh, you know, I, I hated to see Drew walk off into the sunset, but it was time. It had been time. We got that. We got fresh blood in there. Old Jameis, that 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 arm is a, that that arm is an AK. Uh, Jameis got, and uh, man, this offense with Pete Carmichael, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if if family members know it or not, but that year Peyton was suspended under the tutelage of Carmichael. We scored more points than anybody in the league that year. 
and that's what we've been missing. So I'm kind of excited about seeing this this new generation Saints team. And uh, uh, while I, while I'm at it, let me say this here: the views expressed by Uncle Freddie are his and his alone. They do not reflect on Big Q or the sports comma. I'm going to need people like Free Game and Uncle Pauly. Man, y'all know what y'all be talking about before y'all jump up here with that negative stuff. We don't even play the Cowboys this year. I don't even know what he talking about. Uh, Uncle Pauly, he keep, he keep, he just looking for, he just looking for stuff. And he drive me insane. And uh, I, I'm going to need some of the family members to cut that out, bro. We going to the bowl this year. And and certain people with the with the audio negative takes, you know, that, that ain't that ain't cutting it, man. We going to the bowl this year. We already was a we was a top five defense anyway. We done bump we gonna bump up to, to second or second or third this year. So you ain't scoring on us. Ain't nobody in the NFC but the Rams. Now we we got an ugly schedule week nine through fourteen with thirteen, but uh, you know that's a small thing to a giant, bro. You know what I'm saying? What you think? What you think about that though? Nah, I mean yeah, the schedule is is rough. They gave us a late buy back in week fourteen, but listen, I actually like the schedule because uh, we know we got a good team. It gets us into our NFC South schedule early. It gets us, you know, we start off in, in first three games of the schedule or NFC South opponents, which is fine with me. So that means yeah. that most of the games that we hitting on, we getting out the gate early on. We can set the tone on that. So then we have some difficult matchups in between, but that's fine. Toward the back end, we got to go up to what Pittsburgh and uh, what's the other club that we got to deal with that's in the cold weather. I forget. But I mean, but we a Super Bowl team. We go wherever we need to go to beat these guys, man. Whatever we need to do to handle the business, we're going to handle it. That's what Super Bowl means. It don't matter if we got to go in the rain or go to the snow. Wherever we go, we're going to beat your ass. So that's the mentality of the Saints, and that's not enough. The weather is not enough to stop me from going to get the chip because at the end of the day, the Saints will o- overcome any weather obstacles that we face. And to talk about uh, um, the Uncle Paul, the Uncle Paul is actually – uh, very uh, ecstatic about the Saints moves. He sounds like you. You know, he sounds, you know, Uncle Paulie uh, says that he he was, he, that he liked the draft, that he loves the signings, and that his, his, his comment was that Sean Payton was the reason why we wasn't bringing signings like these to make the team even more powerful and more relevant. So, um, but that's what he was saying that Brother Freddie at the end Who of the day. Yeah, that's what Uncle Paulie was saying. So Uncle Paulie actually agreed with you in many respects. But it man, Uncle Paulie voodoo Sean Payton made him quit. Uh, Sean Payton was gonna quit several years earlier, according to what he's yeah, saying. So yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, but he hit it good because because I didn't have an inkling. I didn't see none of that coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he yeah he sounds like you. He sounds like yeah the, the Saints are uh, are doing the right things now to need to win a championship. He's very excited about it. So yeah, he's very positive okay. about it. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to holler holler big up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. He, he, but yeah, man. Yeah. I'm I, I'm I'm real excited though. And Q, you know, I don't like to get excited because I've been disappointed a, a few times you know what i'm saying yeah uh but it, it's looking i i i got a grant i got a grant on the things already i can't even get no takers oh you know what I'm, nah, yeah you, you no know takers. they ain't no, they ain't stupid enough to give give their money away <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh-huh but yeah man um uh i don't know uh I'm ready. I'm ready to get at uh, Reverend Saint and Laddy Daddy and Mickey Lomas. Uh, let me see who else. Who, who else make a, a sports come appearance? 
Oh, well, Sway then. I, and I'm I'm digging the new, I'm digging the new theme song. Thank you. Yeah, he's supposed to pop up here. It was supposed to be uh sometimes last week and uh uh he's supposed to pop up on the stream and uh he didn't materialize. I, I forgot. I was supposed to send him the link. I think I forgot to send him the link, so that was on me. But uh yeah. we'll, we'll check on him, bro. It probably it'll probably, probably be sometimes this upcoming week that we'll he'll be on there. Yeah, Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. Yeah, yeah, he did a wonderful job. Man. He surprised <laughs> me with it, bro. He surprised me. Yeah, with it. yeah, buddy. Uh huh. But yeah, it was it, it was good to holler at you, though, know, Kiwi. I, I, you know, I, I I I be I be in and out. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back with you. All right, brother Fred. Appreciate hollering at you too, my brother. You be safe out there. Yeah? Okay, and and remember for your archives, we going. I said we going to when well, me and you said we going to the bowl this year. That's right. That's right. It's locked in. We got it locked in, Uncle Freddy. It's death. For sure. All right, my brother. Who that to you? All right, Q's. Who that? All right. That's Brother Freddy, man. Much love to Uncle Freddy, man. Chiming in as well on the coma, man. And, and that'll be the stream for tonight. It was fun, man, tonight talking to the family members, going over some Saint talk with the family members tonight, chilling. Uh, glad, I hope y'all had a fun time. I know I did, man. Uh, WB3, Uncle Freddy, uh, free game, and, and uh, uh, Trey stopped by uh, as well and other family members. So I appreciate each one of y'all, Brother Terrio as well. So much love to the fam tonight, man. I hope you like I said, I had some fun, man, talking to y'all. It's been a while since I opened the phone lines uh, on the Friday stream, so it's pretty cool to do that and, and kind of hash out some black and gold news. So, yeah, it's feeling really good in the Who That Nation, man. You know, to be able to actually go through and see what the black and gold are doing and saying, yeah, they they definitely understand what it is, what we want here and to make it happen. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. All right. So pretty cool. Plus, no computer issues either, too, fam. <laughs> Been dealing with those, man. As you can see tonight, it was a pretty smooth stream, wasn't it, family? Pretty smooth. So I guess we batting at a thousand tonight. So anyway, with that being said, fam, I want to thank each and every last one of you guys for uh joining us for tonight on the stream just over two hours give a shout out to all of you guys and uh please feel free hit the like button if you're not a subscriber hit that damn subscribe button and also feel free to share the show's links on your social media feed as well mr pops what's up fam says uh q when the next on q uh we'll see fam i'm i'm kind of working on uh trying to get that done it's one that i'm working on is I don't know what to call it, man, because it's a collection of different things. I don't know what the hell to call it because I'm covering like several different things and I'm really trying to sink it down to one thing. But so much is going on right now. It's hard to kind of kind of flow into one thing, you know, and then when you then that stuff is requires like you marinating it on it. You know, when you I mean, it's a lot, man, it's a lot going on, uh, you know. So, yeah, be, be, be looking out real soon, though, fam, for that, though. I, it, it'll be coming real soon. So, uh, yeah. All right. So appreciate you there, Mr. Pops 2000. Thank you for your, uh, Patreon, uh, membership too, fam. Thank you for supporting that stream. All right. Uh, Ryan says, uh, glad this channel popped up in my recommendations. BR native saints fan for life. Thank you, Ryan Williams for joining us here at the sports coma, man. Uh, much love to you. Appreciate you, uh, spending some time. It's right. Eugene. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you for being here as well. What's up, Debbie? Much love, fam. Appreciate you, queen being here as well. Much love to the rest of the fam as well. I, I, well, I see all y'all. What's up, Tragic? Good to see you, brother. In the stream as well. Pre appreciate you, man. As well, we got some interested family members, man. But anyway, with that being said, man, much love uh, to all you guys. And listen, man, I'm going to pop up on the stream. I don't know if it'll be Saturday or Sunday or Monday, fam. So uh, y'all just hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when we come back. So much love to the fam. And I'm going to holler at y'all later. Who that to you? Yeah. Huh? Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please.
please better help. Running this thing like Elf. Thank God every day I'm not a felt. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons, pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Love yeah. running like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Com. That's right, the who that daily.com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, and even the top flight boxing. News. So if you're a who that and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, who that daily.com is your site. The who that daily.com for the sport who that in all of us. Check out the Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the pro shops the link is in the description section below and remember it helps the platform continue to grow check out the pro shop and who that took you 